Hello, my name is Mark Lance. I teach math in an adult education program in New York City. I've been doing this for 22 years and I'm really committed to seeing my students get their high school diplomas and go on to college, better jobs, and satisfying careers. For each lesson, I usually start by explaining what the math concept is, then working on uh, problems with, no, with just plain numbers and concluding with a word problem similar to what you'll see on the GED test. I plan to do a couple of lessons on number sense, fractions, decimal and percent, ratio and proportion, data, measurements of central tendency, probability, basic algebra, equations, functions, and geometry. Most of my students don't like math. Some even say they hate it or they're afraid of it. I can't promise that after we do these lessons you'll love math, but I hope you'll understand it. It's not magic that only the high priests can understand. Math makes sense, so if we work at it, we can understand it. In fact, I think that you may know a lot more math than you think. Let's do a quick lesson right now. What number system do we use? Uh, by the way, at any point you can stop the uh, tape and try to answer a question and then resume and then see what the answer is. Anyway, what number system do we use? We're familiar with the Roman numeral system which uses these numbers, 1, 5, 10, uh, 50, 100, and 1,000. That's one number system. Thank goodness we don't use that anymore. Computers use a binary system that only is based on 1 and 0 because an electrical circuit is either on or off. But we, thanks to mathematicians from the Eastern world, use Hindu-Arabic numbers. How many number systems are in this system? 10. Any number you can think of can be written with just the symbols of 0 through 9. Our alphabet, which is Roman, has 26 symbols, A through Z. Any thought or emotion you want to express can be written with these 26 symbols. But for math, it's just 10. And for that reason, mathematicians say our number system is a base 10 system. Why 10? Why not five or some other number? Some theorize it's because we have 10 fingers, and that was the original computer when people counted uh, on their fingers. But let's look at a number here, and not this Roman one. I like to use money whenever we can because we know money pretty well. So this is $1,111.11. Um, as we move from right to left, each digit is 10 times bigger than the previous digit. So if this is money and this is a $1 bill, this is a $10 bill, $100 bill, $1,000 bill, and so on same numbers, but each one is 10 times more valuable. In fact, you could think of it this way. This really is a 1, a George Washington. This is not really a 1, it's a 10. It's a $10 bill. This is a $100 bill, Benjamin Franklin. I don't know what's on a 1,000, but this would be in the $1,000 bill. So each time we move to the right, it gets 10 times bigger. The same thing is true on the other side of the decimal point. This is 10 times smaller. So instead of a dollar, it's a tenth of a dollar or a dime. The next one is the hundredths place and it's a hundredth of a dollar or a penny. Um, so let's talk about these places. Forget about the, the cents for the time being. As we sort of just uh, indicated, this is the ones place or the units place. This is the tens place, the hundreds and the thousands. These are also going to be called digits. The, one, the, the units digit, the tens digit, the hundreds digit, and the thousands digit. Over here, this is the tenths digit, and this is the hundredths digit. It's interesting because we call each of these digits, and our fingers are also called digits. The Roman word for digit is digitus, which means toes or fingers. So we, do the, we use these numbers and we use this understanding of it being a base 10 system uh, all the time. <clears throat> the next thing I want to talk about is in rounding numbers, which we use in everyday life and it also shows up in math. So 
Let's take a problem that says, how about uh, 8,900 $47. And the problem says to round this digit off to the nearest hundred. So to answer this problem, and I've seen problems just like this on the GED test, we have to find out what the hundredths digit is. Units, tens, hundreds. So this is the digit we care about. To, to round it to the nearest hundred, we look to the place to the right and, this, and look to see if it's less than five or five or greater. In this case, it's less than five, so we're gonna round it down. To the nearest hundred would be $8,900. In other words, it's closer to $8,900 than it is to $9,000, and that's what rounding means. It could change depending on what digit they said to round it to. If they said to round it to the nearest ones, Units, well, let's not say units. Let's say tens digit instead. To round it to the nearest tens digit, that's this one, units, tens, hundreds, and so forth. This is the one we care about. To figure out what to do to it, we look one digit to the right. And in this case, number seven is greater than five, so we would round up. 8,947 rounded to the nearest 10 is 50. It's closer to 89.50 than it is to 89.40. Okay? The next lesson we're going to be talking about fractions, and we'll start in with that. I hope this was understandable and helpful, and that we'll see you in the next class in fractions. The final thing I want to mention is that if you do find this interesting, I'd like to mention a book that I've written, The Weber House. It's uh, a mystery featuring two 13-year-old girls one a transplant from New Jersey, the other a Native American. Um, it, the story is set in Maine and they're trying to solve a centuries old mystery and they have to use uh, science and math to solve the mystery. The information will be available, you can read it on the screen and I hope to see you in the next lesson for Fractions.